Today's video, I'm going to take this track out of the old cat, the 18 uh, Mountain Cat, and I'm going to put a different track in it. We're going to swap out the drivers and put a whole different system in here. And it's not a single rail, it's still going to be a dual rail, but it's going to be 10 times better than what's in here. So I took the regular 3.0 pitch track off. So that means you're three inches in between windows. The cat has a 3.0. The new alphas have the 3.5. This is an 18, so it's still got the 3.0. The do, I believe, has one of the better tracks in the 3.5 pitch um, track size. So that's why I went with the do track. But in order to put that on, you have to take the 3.0 drivers off and get 3.5 pitch drivers made. So now, none of the manufacturers offer this system for this older sled, so you have to suss it out. So my good buddy at Mount Magic, Ken there, he's doing this a lot, so I asked him to find me some drivers and he uh, got a hold of his contact. Ordered me up a set of seven tooth, 3.5 tooth drivers. So they are a little bit bigger in diameter than these which is going to help it turn over nice and gears it up a little bit. So I'll get a little more speed out of it. Plus this thing's going to roll over so nice because I clipped the track, cut all the nubs off. This thing is going to be awesome. So guys, I'm going to be taking this track, if anybody can recognize what and where it's from, and I'm going to put it into there and get rid of this kind of useless cat track. Again, Ooh. check out the cool wrap, guys. Isn't that friggin' awesome? Digit nine. Woo! Okay, there, again. Look at that track. That's going in the kitty. We gotta check things over. I haven't done this yet on this one, so it's gonna be a little bit of a learning process. First, we're going to go and loosen the track off. We loosen the axle bolt first, and now we're going to back off the eyelets. Probably the easiest way to get a skid out of out of the sled. Flip it on its side. Loosen everything off. They come out way easier. In order to get this uh, drive shaft out, guys, you gotta take this wonderful chain case off. What a marvelous piece of engineering. You do that, take a little piece of rag maybe, stick it in the outlet of the oil, just so it doesn't drip everywhere. There, now you should be able to get at that snap ring on the chain plate on the drive shaft. What we're gonna have to do is uh, probably loosen the chain. Well, that's a gimme. Uh, take the chain off, that's easy on these cats. And then pull the snap ring off. No problem. That snap ring right there has got to come off for that bottom sprocket to come off. That's what it looks like inside. Once you get that gear off, I got in here, I took those brackets off. Now we got to take these nuts off in order to get the brake disc off. And then that shaft should just come right out of there. It's a lot easier if you take the secondary off. It's not hard on this sled. As you can see, I'm almost there. 
So this is kind of the bearing keeper on the left hand side. The screws are gonna have those bolts have to come out in order to get the brake caliper off. So when you are taking this out, you have to split your caliper. Uh, I hate doing it, but you have to do it to get that to get the rotor off, uh, the brake disc, and this uh, caliper assembly. So the only way to get it off is to split this baby. You do get some fluid leaking, so put down some cloths or rags or whatever. But other than that, it's not too bad. Then that shaft pops right out of there. I didn't have to take the chain case off. It's all good. So nice aluminum dry shaft. Take a look at those those drivers. They're gonna change on the three and a half pitch. Cool stuff. Nice aluminum, very light. Holy man, is that ever light? Good stuff. So when you guys are doing your drivers, some guys will attempt this, some guys won't. If you're not comfortable with it, take it to a shop, get it done. Uh, Ken Mount Magic, awesome guy at this. He'll do it for you for a small fee. But always measure. I mean, take some measurements of where the drivers are going to be, especially from the end you're going to be putting them on from. That way, you can't screw it up. So, you know, take some good measurements of where they are, the old ones are, how far apart they are in the track, how far up the other one is. Write them down so that when you're pressing them on, you know what you're doing. far these things are timed really nice so put them on your flat surface and rock them a bit if they don't rock back and forth they're perfect that's good there's no movement there whatsoever so we're good to go to keep going and that'd be the finished product Ready to be put into that. With that. Okay, well for starters, the old track was starting to lose paddles the first year I had it. Um, plus, it's too stiff on the outside. Like there's, some guys do know how a track works, some guys don't. Um, we were cutting tracks 20 years ago, like cutting paddles off, trying different things, different lengths, forwards, backwards, making them lighter, making them stronger. So we kind of got a good idea what works and what doesn't. Uh, the manufacturers try to make something that's good all around for everybody, right? They want to make it good on some hard pack. I mean, Kat's first stuff was not great on hard pack, but it worked great in the snow, in the deep snow. Most of their stuff works great in deeper snow, or in the harder pack stuff, but not in the fluffy snow. So it depends on how you ride, where you ride again, right? So I don't know. What we're gonna do today, uh, I'm not gonna put on a lift, I'm just gonna lay it on its side. So that there, guys, now you can actually see how long the cooler is on this snowmobile. It's not very big. Like you take a dew, for instance, it goes all the way to the back, and a Polaris. And that's why they get so much ice buildup on their running boards. With these cats, you don't get any ice buildup. Because there's nothing to melt or heat up. Oh my God, what a mess. So that gives you a little better idea of the bottom of the cat set up. They do that for many reasons. Probably the main reason is to save weight. Uh, it's definitely not for cooling because they don't cool very well. And I don't know if it's a byproduct or what, but it sure saves the running boards. You don't get any ice buildup on the running boards. 
and you don't get any ice buildup in the tunnel. So it saves weight kind of all the way around. I like it, it's one of their better ideas. This is going in the chain case. This has to go like this. Ooh, Ricky. Ooh, that's not good. Okay, I gotta do some fixing. Nut pliers, get out of plenty of chisels. The good part about this shaft is it's aluminum. So you can actually fix stuff quite easily with it. Easy fix. There we go. Okay. I guess I should maybe clean this thing up. Eh? Kind of a, I don't know, if you hang around a certain, I mean, if you've been doing this for a while and the guys out there all know who they are who've done this and they'll pick it up that it's just uh, another one of those things. I mean, the manufacturers build great stuff, but they can't build all of it. Or the best, or whatever, right? So, guys always want their stuff to go faster. It's been, it's been from the dawn of time. Everybody's making shit go faster. This is gonna help. So I did manage to take a little bit of weight out of this track, but then I put some clips on, so add a little bit more. But it should be pretty good. Well. If I had the old track here, I could show you. So most tracks, they save weight, right? Most everybody, all the manufacturers are coming out with every second clip missing for weight. Um, it does not help your sled turn over at all because it gets sticky. The rubber gets sticky on, on the slider. So to put clips on, as you'll see in the video there, uh, Ken at Mount Magic does that kind of thing. He's good at it, and for a tiny fee, he'll do it for you. Easy peasy. So on the cat, we do have quite a bit of room. Nice. Well, that couldn't go together any better. Track laying in there. That's awesome. So remember when I was taking it apart, I said you can't take it apart unless you take the haze brake apart. So we're going to do that to get this back in first, and then we'll tip it over on its feet and put the skid in. Actually, we're going to put the skid in just how it is. It's way easier. And I will show you that. So yes, this is going to work slick. Kitty's gonna be a ripper. I don't know if anybody noticed, but this is not our regular lair. Uh, I had to move into a different location. My buddy's letting us stay here in this nice great big shop. Taking this apart does make a little bit of a mess, but it's kind of necessary to do what we gotta do. Okay, so then we're gonna drop this back in here. I'm gonna move this up, drop that in there nicely. Oh, that's beauty. So now I'm not too sure, but I'm pretty sure we're, well, not sure, sure, not sure. We might have to bleed the brakes. I got the one side on. I'm going to put the sprockets on. I don't like usually doing it on the ground. But... We can do it. We'll pretend we're in a parking lot. Just like the good old days. So we uh, checked over our chain. When you guys take this apart, it's always good to inspect your chain. Because sometimes these little links in here break. 
will cause you trouble. So you go through it. Check those little links in here. Sometimes they break. But as I stated earlier, when I took these things apart, this chain and sprocket system in this cat's pretty beefy. Not a huge fan of the aluminum sprocket, but this one seems to be doing good so far. Of course, I'm not doing backflips and re-entries and all that, jumping off cliffs and stuff. That's a whole nother ball game. That's hard on stuff. You don't want aluminum stuff in there. There we go. Put our snap rings on there. Anyways, I'm going to put this snap ring back in the sled. And did anybody know that there's a round side to a snap ring and a square side? So the square side you want with all the pressure on it so it doesn't pop off. Makes sense, right? So you got to look at it really close. I don't know if the camera's even going to pick that up. But one side's kind of smooth. You know what? Let's do this. So this is the smooth side, I can see it. You can also feel it. So if you take your finger, you can actually feel this side is rounded. If you take it over on this side, you can feel it's sharp and it's square. This is the side you want facing out with the pressure on it so that it can't come off. Tip of the day. So if you have one that comes off, check it. Oh, so pretty. Just to make sure it's on all the way, I like to just give her a little tap around the edges. I kind of feel naked not being in the shop. So there, yeah, it's spun. Looks like it's in the groove. I got it on the right way. On to snap ring number two. The one on the top sprocket's a little bit different. It's just a spring snap ring. I don't believe there's a smooth and a rough side, but if there is, I don't know about it. Doesn't look like it to me. These ones are pretty easy to put on. They're kind of, you just wind them up. And they should go in. And they're light, so. So a groove there, she's in there. Excellent, just cooking right along, guys. This is like one of the best, uh, the best tensioners I've seen on the market. It's so simple. Done. So every time that track gets, or the sprocket gets a little loose, it clicks down one more little notch and keeps it nice and tight. Brilliant idea. We get two carried away, so these lock nuts should probably have a little Loctite on them. It's come off on me before. I'm going to put some red Loctite on here, guys, because it is uh, not fun when this comes off. It came off on me once in the mountains. I took it to the cat dealer to get him to fix it because it was still under warranty. All I did was take this banged up this banged up bolt or knot or whatever you call it and screwed it on with some Loctite. They didn't put a new one on or nothing. Yeah. Well, there's probably a wrench I'm guessing Cat has for that because they had one for the old style stuff, which I have. But I don't have one for the new ones. I'm guessing there's a torque spec on it, but I don't know what it would be. Maybe someone can comment on the comments there and tell us what the torque spec is supposed to be. Yeah, I wish I had the tool for this. 
It's not like I do it every day, so. When you put it in, I like to put the front end first. Get her in there. And little nobbies. Cameraman. He's gonna give me a hand. Putting the bottom one in. Can you lift up on the back of that and still hold on to the camera? Just like that. Yep. Oh, you bitch. No worries. <coughs> Wiggle a little bit. Up and down. Urgh. Okay, that's good. Thanks. Thank you kindly. I'll use this modified hammer. Nothing wrong with having too much Loctite, eh, Kenny? Wunderbar. Okay, we gotta get this up in the air somehow. So now is about the time, guys, that you wanna check out our other videos about track alignment and ski alignment. So what I'm going to do, I want to get the bolts tight on the skid first. And then we're going to give it a track alignment, followed by a ski alignment. Just like we explained in our other videos. Oh, I hope that track tightens up in there. So what all we're doing here, guys, we're just tightening up the suspension bolt. I know I usually got it on a stand, I'm still got to apologize because uh, we had to move during the procedure of this track. I don't have my regular toolbox with me. And but we're getting her done. And as usual, if you guys got any comments or questions, questions preferably, just put them right down below and we get back to you. We got to, oh, just about get to all of them. So we will get back to you. And if you learned anything through this video, subscribe because there's more of this coming. So we're gonna try to tighten this up. Give me about a couple minutes here. We'll grab a Allen wrench because the tightening thing mechanism on this thing is kind of weird, and we'll see if we can tighten this track. I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm pretty excited. Because I think this is gonna be cool. A cool little mod. Seems like a jump up into my toolbox and grab a, a ratchet one of these. You see that? Right on the mark, you can see where the washer was sitting. We're close to where the old track was. So if you do the numbers, we have an inch and a half on the ground more. So we should be almost right to the back by the time we're done tightening it. This is probably the part of the video that you speed up. Oh, oh my God. Look how easy that rolls over. <laughs> I bet you can't do that with a stock sled. Try it, guys. Yeah, there's no clutch on there, but Take it off and try to spin a track like that. This thing is gonna be wicked. Look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. Fuck yeah. Love it. So the tensioner is only, see the old one was right here. You can see it. So we're back about an inch, inch and a quarter and we got another oh, quarter inch, half an inch back there and we're a little loose. But you gotta remember these big drivers don't Skip. So you can run your track a little looser, which is going to be awesome. We got the track on. It's a 165 do track on a cat. I have seven tooth 
seven and a half inch drivers, I think they are. So they're a little bigger than stock. Thing looks great, rolls over so easy. I just love it. So I'm gonna put the chain case back together and the clutch on. We're gonna spin it over, do a nice track alignment and a ski alignment and stuff, just like on our videos. And then uh, we'll let you see it kind of run. We'll do a little, uh, get some, some uh, video of the track running so you can see that I'm not shitting around. Stay tuned. How are we gonna lift it to run it? Hmm? if I put a spark plug cap back on. I had them off. Fuck, I can't see in there now. Sounds like it's running on one cylinder. <laughs> I forgot to put a spark plug on it. 